Hello. For this video, we will be talking about, we will be discussing how to use uh, Microsoft Excel Solver add-in in order to solve linear programming models. Before we start, if you haven't installed Microsoft Excel uh, add Solver add-in, please make sure you have installed the Solver add-in into your uh, Microsoft Excel. Uh, these are the links that you can watch in order for you to learn how to install the add-ins into your computer. Um, there's one for Windows computers and the other one is for Mac computers. Now, assuming that you've already installed your um, Microsoft Excel Solver add-in into your computer, we will now go and try solving a a linear programming model um, that we've previously discussed in class, and that that um, that problem is called the red blue gadget problem. I'm sure you have encountered this already. And this is the linear programming model. Now. In order to solve linear programming models in Microsoft Excel using the solver add-in, we have to find a way in order for us to input or put this linear programming model, these mathematical functions, into a format that Excel will be able to read. And because Excel will be able to read it, Eventually, when we use the solver add-in, it will also be able to read and understand and eventually solve the problem. And that is what we will be doing today. So let's go to Microsoft Excel. And I've already set up the, the worksheet, initially set up the worksheet. Um, and let me go through the, 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 the setup. Okay. What I have here are column B and C. Column B, I've labeled column B in row 1 to be the red gadget, and that is your X1 variable. I've labeled column C to be the blue gadget, X2, and that's X, the variable X2. And after all your variables, after all your variables, I've inputted here LHS, which signifies uh, left-hand side, and then the word sign, and then RHS, uh, which signifies the right-hand side. Now, the, the, the row below these labels, I have highlighted as yellow, especially under column B and C, because cell B2 and cell C2 will now contain the decision variable values. Meaning, when, when, when we solve this using Excel Solver, the answer to the linear programming model will come out or should come out in cell B2 and cell C2. Okay? Now, after putting the decision variable values, uh, the next few rows will contain the objective function and the different constraints of the model. So for, in the, for example, in this case, after decision variable values, we will put the objective function, which is to maximize our profit. And what is our profit function equal to? Our profit function is equal to 500x1 plus 300x2. In this case, in order for us to, to come up with an Excel worksheet model for this linear programming model, what I will be doing is inputting the coefficients only. And I will explain why we are only inputting the coefficients for now. So the coefficient for x1 in the profit function is 500. The coefficient of x2 in the profit function is 300. Now, the next three rows will be designated for uh, the, the constraints, the steel supply constraint, the wood supply constraint, and the labor supply constraint. And again, 
we will only input the coefficients. So what are the coefficients of your steel supply, wood, and labor supply in your model? It's a 2 and a 0 x2, 0 x2, a 0 x1, and a 2 x2, and a 3 x1 plus 2 x2. So it's a 2 x1 plus 0 x2, a 0 x1 plus 2 x2, and finally, 3x1 plus 2x2. So again, we are just inputting the coefficients. Now, for the sign, we will include the sign of the three constraints. What are the signs of the three constraints? All are less than or equal to. So let me put that in. Less than or equal to, less than or equal to, less than or equal to. And finally, we have our right hand side 1000, 1200, and 1800. So, guys, this is uh, just the way to initially set up your uh, Excel worksheet. Again, just to recap, you will allocate one column per variable, and in this case, we have two variables x1 and x2. After allocating, after um, inputting all your variables, you put in the words LHS, sign, and right hand side, RH, RHS on the right. And then for the rows, you designate the first row to be your decision variable values. And then the next few rows will be for your objective function and constraints, depending on how many, how many constraints you have. Okay? So now, our, our goal is for us to convert this mathematical model into a model where Excel will be able to read and understand. Okay? So, for example, how do we now input 500x1 or how do we now uh, create a model such that Excel will be able to read 500x1 plus 300x2? And in that case, we will put that here in, in, in cell D3. So our goal right now is to come up with a formula that will represent our profit function 500x1 plus 300x2. And I hope um, after going through uh, Microsoft Excel lessons before, it is easy to understand that the, the, the formula or the function is equal to B3 times B2 plus C3 times C2. Okay? And of course, the left-hand side right now uh, becomes zero because currently B2 and C2 are zero. But for example, let's say let's say it comes out that x1 is equal to 100 and x2 is equal to 200. Obviously, your profit function, your profit value will will change no? accordingly. Okay. But for now, let us delete them. In the same way, we want to represent 2x1, the left hand side, 2x1 plus 0x2 in Excel form. And again, how do we do that? In formula form. We have B4 times B2 plus C4 times C2. Okay? And let me finish the others. B5 times B2 plus C5 times C2. And finally, B6 times B2 plus C6 times C2. Okay? As you can see there, sorry. You now see the different formula or functions na, that will represent each of the left-hand side in your objective function and your constraints. Now, I hope you you are able to notice the the the, the function or the formula we've used. No? 
in all four rows, we've always referred to B2 and C2. And in this case, the, the cell that you're multiplying with B2 and C2 is always on the same row of the equation. So for this equation, we are multiplying B3 and C3. For this row, we are multiplying B4 and C4. For this row, B5, C5. And finally, for this row, B6, C6. Which means we can actually come up with a better formula called sum product. And if you remember sum product, the sum product function actually multiplies the corresponding elements of two arrays. And in this case, what are the two arrays we are pertaining to? For the, for the profit function, for the objective function, the first array is B3, C3. And the second array is B2, C2. And because we will always want to refer to the decision, decision variable values of x1 and x2, then we would like to put an anchor or dollar sign on the array B2, C2. And in this case, and in this case, we just have to copy paste the formula. Okay? Now, so what do we have here? We now have an Excel model that, well, we now have a linear programming model that Excel is able to read. What do we mean by able to read? Excel now understands that D3, in this case, D3 contains the function of our profit, the left, well, actually the left-hand side function of our profit, no? D4 contains our, the, the, the left-hand side of our steel supply constraint, D5 contains our wood supply constraint, and finally D6 contains our labor supply constraint. So if I were to identify where the linear programming model is, okay, the linear programming model for the red blue gadget problem this linear programming model can be identified in this particular in these particular cells we would like to maximize we would like to maximize d3 subject to so let me write that maximize d3 subject to Your left-hand side, well, actually, let me highlight this. Subject to D4 less than or equal to F4. Next. D5 less than or equal to F5. And finally, D6 less than or equal to F6. And, of course, we have to include our non-negativity constraints, which means B2 and C2 are greater than or equal to 0. This is what I mean by inputting our linear programming model into a format that Excel will be able to understand. As you can see, we are now referring to Excel cells. Okay. Now, on to using the solver add-in in order to solve this model. So what do we have to do? We have to go to uh, Tools for Mac. Go to Tools and then click on Solver. Uh, for Windows, if I remember correctly, you just have to go to the Data Ribbon and look for Solver there. In the end, you will be able to see this dialog box. And let's try to understand this dialog box. First, this part of the dialog box, we want to set the objective. And in this case, where is our objective function? Our objective function is D3. Remember, we want to maximize D3. Right? Okay, so D3. And what is our objective? Our objective is to maximize. D3. 
uh, we can also uh, use the Excel Solver add-in for a minimization problem. Please uh, do not mind this value of anymore because uh, for, uh, for our purposes, we will just be limited to either maximize or minimize minimization uh, problems. Next, if you can see this, by changing variable cells, this pertains to our decision variable values. So just click on, on this part of the, the dialog box and highlight or select B2 until C2. So what we are actually saying is we are telling the solver add-in that B2 until C2 contains all our uh, variables. Next, for, uh, for the constraints, we can add constraints in this area. And as you can see, we can click on the Add button. This will come out. The cell reference here pertains to the left-hand side. The middle part contains all the uh, inequalities and the signs and uh, others, which I will explain later. And finally, the constraint refers to the right-hand side. Okay? So, for this example, we have three constraints. D4, 